Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone, welcome to episode number 14, Moments with the Quran. Today we're going to take another ayah from Surah Al-A'raf and in particular ayah number 55 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'aw wa khufyah innahu la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers towards uh, the concept of dua whilst in a state of humility and um, observing this dua in secret. Okay, so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers towards. Now, uh, number one, dua, uh, as mentioned to us by the scholars of tafsir, carries uh, two meanings, a more specific meaning and a broader meaning. The specific meaning, no doubt, is what we know, right? Which is to supplicate, to raise our hands and ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So based on this meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to supplicate whilst we are in a state of humility and um, uh, in a, uh, whilst it's, it's, you know, or for the act to be done in secret and we shouldn't transgress in our dua, in our supplication. But also from the extended meanings of dua is that dua entails everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Islam as an act of worship, like our salah and our zakah and our fasting and our hajj and so on and so forth. And based on the broader meaning, then we understand from this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us towards um, his worship whilst we are in a state of humility and that we do these acts of worship in secret. Now, in particular, if we look at all the evidences of Islam and, and collate them and collect them together, we understand that this concept of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret specifically is for the voluntary acts of worship. And I'll explain uh, this uh, a little bit more just now. But um, why uh, does the Sharia want us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the voluntary acts of worship in secret? Why does the Sharia prefer this? Well, the Sharia does because this is more safer for our ikhlas and our sincerity. And it uh, protects us from falling into hidden shirk which is riya, which is to do acts to show off. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, right? And um, the evidence for this that the sharia loves for us uh, to do our voluntary acts um, in secret is an ayah like this, as well as an ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. We didn't take it in our series, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِن تُبْدُ الصَّدَقَاتِ فَنِعِمَّاهِ وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you give the sadaqa, the sadaqat, if you give it out, if you give uh, the money to the poor uh, openly, then this is good. But if you do it secretly, then this is better for you. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says doing it in secret is better. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, in the hadith of Uqbat ibn Amir radiallahu an uh, in a narration that is found in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad and in uh, Sunan Abi Dawood and in At-Tirmidhi and uh, uh, An-Nasai and, and the other books of hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Al-Jahiru bil-Qur'an kal-Jahiri bil-Sadaqa wal-Musirru bil-Qur'an kal-Musirri bil-Sadaqa that the one who reads the Qur'an openly, loudly uh, where, where everyone knows that he or she is reading the Qur'an is like the one who gives Sadaqa openly and the one who uh, reads the Qur'an in private um, secretively, then uh, it's like the one who gives sadaqah in secret. Now, Imam Al-Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, when he explains this hadith, he's saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is highlighting to us that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically highlighted for us in Surah Al-Baqarah, that it's better for you to read your Quran uh, quietly. If you read it aloud, then it's okay as long as you're not doing it to show off. But if you read it in secret, then this is even better. So this is the default rule with regards to uh, voluntary acts of worship, extra acts of worship. But if we look at the evidences of the Sharia, and as I said earlier, we'll, we'll get into this into, in, in better detail. If we look at all of the evidences of the Sharia, we see that the Sharia has exceptions. The Sharia wants certain acts of worship to be done openly, by default, and doing it openly serves the greater purpose than doing it in secret, such as, for example, those acts of worship which are compulsory, like our Salah. Right? Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Uh, compulsory zakah, our compulsory charity, which is known as zakah. Uh, fasting, the compulsory fasts, uh, the compulsory hajj, and so on and so forth. This should be done openly. And the more uh, intense uh, the level of obligation is to an act, then the more better it is for that act to be done openly because number one the act should be done anyway and it's expected that a person is doing it and number two it encourages other people 
uh, to do this act as well. And uh, more importantly, by doing it openly, we are making manifest in our society that we are Muslims and upon Islam, and this is a Muslim society. All right. So these are some of the wisdoms explained by the scholars. Also, for example, uh, acts which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to observe in congregation, even if it's not compulsory. Right? So we have the compulsory salah, but we've discussed that in terms of category number one. But for example, salatul istisqa, the salah for rain, or uh, the salah of the two Eids, according to one of the views of the scholars, um, uh, that, it's, uh, that, that it's not compulsory, it's sunnah. Um, and um, other similar acts, right? So they're not uh, compulsory. However, we've been commanded to do it in a gathering, do it together, right? So this, uh, we say that the Sharia makes an exception and the Sharia loves for this to be done openly and the Sharia has a purpose and an objective by it being done openly and together and doing it in secret goes against the objectives that the Sharia wants to achieve in doing it openly. So the Salatul Istisqa, we should all go out. People will see us, yes, yes, it's not compulsory and people will see us, but the Sharia wants that unity and the Sharia doesn't mind uh, the worship being known between the people. So this is another category. Also, brothers and sisters in Islam, um, uh, the Sharia makes an exception towards doing things openly if you're a person of authority or if you have a following. And no doubt this will, will change from place to place. A father in his home has authority, right? So he has a responsibility in educating his family. So he does some acts of worship from the voluntary acts of worship openly to teach the family. Like we see, for example, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu an. Uh, we find um, in, 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 in the books that collate um, the occurrences at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in, how he recited the opening dua when he began the salah loudly to teach the people. Or for example, his son Ibn Umar radiallahu anhum and Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, how they recited A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim the ta'awudh in salah loudly so people could learn. So here the Sharia says the objective of teaching the people beats or the, the maslaha, the benefit of teaching the people beats the benefit of keeping it a secret. So even though it's voluntary salah, but if you read it loud to teach the people, then this is an exception. And a fourth category that the scholars highlight um, is a category related to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made as a station from the stations of the religion. Like for example, the sacrifice during the day of Eid, for example, this should be done openly and this is from the Sha'air, this is from um, uh, you know, the, 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 the matters of the religion and matters uh, that are specific to Islam and show the presence of Islam and so on and so forth. So brothers and sisters in Islam, in this particular ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us towards, um, uh, towards worshipping him in a state of humility and, in a, and whilst that act is done in secret. However, we've highlighted the exceptions to this particular rule. Also, I want to highlight brothers and sisters in Islam that why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us towards humility before he commands us towards doing the act in secret? Well, number one, because as we've highlighted, there's certain acts that Allah wants us to do openly. But number two, because doing the act in secret is a means of attaining humility and humility is really the objective from all the acts of worship that we do. So this is a subtle benefit that we, 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 we gain from the ayah. Um, last but not least, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of the ayah, إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the transgressors. And in terms of dua, then, uh, when, meaning supplication, right, which is the default uh, understanding when the term dua is used, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us what constitutes transgression in dua. For example, if a person asks for something that Allah said he will not do, so, like for example, a person makes dua and says, Ya Allah, make me a prophet. This is from transgression. A person makes dua against himself or his family. This is from transgression. Against meaning you ask Allah for bad things to happen to you or your family. This is from transgression in dua. Also from transgression in dua is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way whereby you disturb other people or to make dua in a way to try and gain blessings and a benefit from other people. All this is from transgression. Subhanallah, today's lesson uh, went longer than our usual norm, but nonetheless it is uh, very important and I pray this sheds some light in terms of the concept of worship in secret and worship in open and uh, the wisdoms between both categories and um, the exceptions with regards to uh, the lesson at hand. I love you all for the sake of Allah. May Allah accept our month. Ameen. And until next time, Salamu Alaikum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh.